been a long time since uh, these are here, so I kind of have to rearrange them and see which way they would go. So, I know that goes there for sure. That's like for the starter, I think. Uh, these are for the Weibo flex disc, whatever you want to call it. These look like they're for the flywheel, but I already have all of these. These look like they're for the pressure plate bolts, I'm assuming. Uh, these look like they're for the, um, what are they for? Transmission mount, over there. And here we are left with these. I'm thinking some of them are still in my tool bag. The only ones different are the ones for the starter, if I remember correctly, and the two over here that have a nut on them. But I might be able to use the ones from the automatic transmission. So basically there's like a little lock pin over there. I don't know what you call this lock pin. Cotter pin of some kind. And uh, I think this should just pop out, no? I actually don't know what I'm doing. Wait. What we're doing here is we're replacing the slave cylinder. Um, the new clutch kit comes with the new slave cylinder. Uh, so we're just going to replace that real quick in preparation for installing the transmission. Ah, looks so fresh looking. Bearing sounds good. First, and that is for comparison. Let's get that one out. Okay. Oh, Jesus. Yikes. This thing must have had a huge, huge uh, leak. It's penetrating it alright. Six and a half hours later. This is after using the foam grime cleaner, whatever you call it, and brake cleaner. So I think I think that's okay for now. Oops. Got the uh, the transmission kind of prepped and ready to go in. Uh, we also were able to get the pedals all the way in and um, remove the automatic uh, sh transmission shifter. So uh, we're looking pretty good. Yeah, you know, this is only the day five, day four, day five. So pretty pretty stuck with progress. Now I got to order um, valve cover gasket, rear main seal. Forgot to order that. I think that's pretty much it. Just those two things and we should be good to move forward. Um, after the rear main seal comes in, I can install that, install the flywheel, install the pressure brake clutch, then we can insert the transmission in and go from there. And then we have to verify if the drive shaft will work and if the shifter location will be, you know, an okay spot. If not, you know, I, I'm not too concerned if it is off by a little bit. Um, maybe just trim a little bit of the, the shifter hole, but we'll see when we get there. See what we got here. So hopefully this is the right one. Rear main seal for this car and apparently a lot of Mercedes-Benz cars. Um, get to open it. And there's like a plastic piece that kind of just holds it together, I guess, until you install it. Interesting. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and remove the old one and get this installed. And after that, install the flywheel, clutch, pressure plate, and transmission. So, you may be wondering why I have bread here. Um, I'm a little hungry, so. I 
I hate this part because the flywheel is always kind of heavy. So to use a torque wrench, um, pretty easy. Uh, you basically, it depends on what kind what kind you have. Um, this is like a click type. So basically when it clicks, that means you're done. It's torqued. Um, you have these little um, numbers over here and it's kind of self-explanatory once you do it. I'm sorry I'm doing a terrible way of explaining it, but basically you need to torque these flywheel bolts to 40 foot pounds. Um, 40, 45, I think I did the E55, 45. Um, but this one we're just gonna do 40 because I think that's what it calls for. Um, I can't even see it. Great. I think because the light is against it, but um, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this needs to be kind of like sanded down a little bit. It made it really difficult for the transmission to come off last time, so um, we don't want it to be difficult to install. So I'm here sanding it down. So here we are. We got the clutch kit here. Not sure why it doesn't come with uh, pressure plate screws. But luckily, we took that out of the car we pulled the transmission out of. So luckily, I have that alignment tool and the pressure plate. So I'm just going to get the surface cleaned up real quick and make sure the surface on the flywheel is cleaned up real good. Don't want any dirt or grime on there. And then we're just going to go ahead and bolt this on. Clutch in, protruding side facing the transmission. Where is that? pretty much ready to insert the transmission so now I'm going to go ahead and get it ready and uh, slide it slide it in underneath first and then once I got underneath I'll put it on top of the jack um, and then once I have it on top of the jack we left these uh, exhaust hangers which helps a little bit in making it stable slightly <laughs> so I guess let's just get to it Excited to have this inside the, the car. things myself um, I just for some reason I just don't like bothering people sometimes um, but sometimes I know my limits and say hey you know I uh, I need some help with this shit <laughs> and right now I think I still got it um, you're really really close really close just got transmission kind of in um, 
I just wanted to give uh, the stupid GoPro decided to die while I was doing this course. I thought I could get away with um, getting the transmission in without raising up the engine, but I was wrong. I had to raise up the engine again. So what I did was, since I'm the only one here and I only have one jack, I lifted the transmission up enough to where it was able to get into the um, the input shaft was a, was able to get in, you know, attached to the flywheel and all the good stuff. Um, but it wasn't all the way in yet, of course, because it's not angled correctly. So I, I did that and I put the crossfire cross member on real quick and just bolted it up loosely just so the transmission is being held up. Um, and once that's up, I let go of the jack from the transmission and I went back there and jacked up the engine. Um, like maybe like an inch, I would say, or half an inch. You don't need too much on the CLK at least. On the E55 you kind of do because it's a pain. It's a lot tighter for some reason. Um, but anyway, uh, I think it's because the engine's a little bit further back on the E55, or yeah, it is. Um, anyway, uh, once you raise that up, you should be able to get back here and you loosen up these two bolts that uh, hold it to the transmission mount so that it's it's just resting on the cross member not really bolted up to it and then you just use force and kind of just wiggle it in put it in gear so that you can spin the input shaft while you're wiggling it in and that's pretty much it um it's kind of in it's still a little bit protruding but i think we can get that remedied here just a sec uh it's almost as if it needs actually a little less over there because I see like there's more there's more of a gap on the bottom so let me just start putting some bolts in and go from there So on this side, the starter is threaded, so you could just screw them right in, those two long uh, bolts. But on the left side, you're going to need nuts on the other end. Like how I said on the other side, it has the starter. The starter is threaded, so that's easy. On here, you have two, uh, you have two bolts with two nuts, so you just got to have a 16 on this end while uh, tightening it on the other end. Voila. Oh, shit. Oh. Now, I really, 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 really should invest in a uh, an air ratchet. Because that would make life so much easier and faster. Oh, is this loud? I think, I think it's tight. Ah, oh, perfect. Finally. Fuck. Jesus Christ, that took forever. Definitely need to buy an air ratchet. Oh my God. All right, all of them, as far as I know, are tight. All the bolts. So that's pretty much it for today. Um, we were able to get the transmission in. I installed the clutch and flywheel and a pressure plate and all that good stuff. Um, cleaned it up real good. Um, trim out a bit of the shifter surround opening. So yeah, I think we're a little bit past the halfway point. It's kind of setting in now that, you know, this car is also about to be manual swapped. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but the dilemma that we have is uh, first thing in the morning tomorrow is uh, I'm going to head to the junkyard and measure out some drive shafts from an S-Class and see how long they are. Um, right now we need a drive shaft that is 31 inches long. Uh, the Crossfire and the CLK both are 30 inches. So since the manual transmission is an inch shorter than the automatic, uh, we need a drive shaft that's an inch longer, roughly. Unless you want me to double stack Guivos. Uh, <laughs> um, 
But yeah, uh, I think at least we're pretty much past, I think we're past the halfway point now. Um, we got the pedals in and all that stuff. So really tomorrow, if we can find a working drive shaft, install that, install the rest of the exhaust, get the shifter to bolt up the shifter and bolt up the trend, the cross member, transmission cross member. Um, looks like the crossfire one will work for the CLK. Um, just need to drill new holes and, and then we can go for a test drive, assuming all goes well. Oh, bleed the clutch and all that stuff. That's pretty much it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's I'm very, very tired. I can't wait to shower and go to sleep.